yields back. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Rose, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Stahl, and thanks to uh, Ranking Member Lynch for holding uh, this important hearing, and thank you to all of uh, our witnesses for taking time to be with us today. I want to start with you, Dr. Cox. Uh, could you please describe the concept of technological singularity and share your perspective on whether you believe AI will achieve singularity and provide an estimate on the possible time frame for this development? Um. Thank you for the question. Um, so the idea of a singularity is this, we, we, we reach a point where the technology is, is able to advance its own progress faster and faster and faster such that it can get sort of a positive feedback loop and then we, we suddenly have an explosion of capability. Um, what, one of the things that's interesting that, you know, I, I just dusted off a copy of um, the Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil that happened to be on a shelf that I was cleaning up. Um, it, w one thing you'll see about futurists is they, they often get the shape of things right, but the, the, the years are, are difficult to predict. And I wouldn't hazard to make a guess about, you know, when that's going to happen or if it's going to happen. But I, I would just say that I don't think we're anywhere near, as somebody who works with this technology day in and day out, I don't think our biggest risks come from sort of some eclipse of AI is better at everything than humans than humans are. There certainly are labor market issues that we have to deal with as ta subtasks of a job are displaced. But I don't think we're in imminent danger of uh, anything so extreme as a singularity. Thanks. I appreciate the insight, Dr. Lee. I found an interesting article from the nonprofit uh, Cash Essentials that states, quote, some AI-driven systems may treat cash transactions as suspicious, mm -hmm. leading to increased scrutiny and regulatory pressure that discourages cash use, unquote. How can we ensure that AI does not discriminate against individuals who use cash? Additionally, what measures can be taken to prevent AI systems from falsely flagging cash transactions as suspicious, thereby avoiding undue pressure on companies and regulators to favor cashless payments over cash transactions? I do appreciate that question because I think we are seeing, based on the regulatory sandbox that we use to create the fintech industry, a lot more cash transactions, especially among the unbanked or underbanked. To your point, Here's where I think AI could be an interesting tool to help us combat fraud. Uh, improved analysis through AI detection systems could actually be helpful there. Uh, using AI in ways that the AI sort of cleaves with the data about the underbanked or unbanked and combines that with traditional legacy systems could also be helpful. We often talk about AI as just taking people's data, but it also considers other externalities, like where you live, what your zip code is, these other proxies. Oftentimes, those proxies are for the worse in terms of bias and discrimination, but they could actually also be helpful in helping us understand what the, tradition, what the new modern economy looks like in banking. So I would suggest that there are some techniques on the technology side, but there's also room for people like me as a sociologist to come sit at the table and help determine how we do this better. We already see, uh, uh, without the benefit of AI, we see cashless or cash transactions being discriminated against in a number of ways, so it's a very real concern to me. Mr. Reisman, uh, with the increasing prevalence of artificial intelligence, it is clear that AI-assisted fraud will likely escalate rapidly, employing novel tactics to deceive consumers. In my view, it is essential to warn the public about emerging AI-driven fraud schemes as soon as they are identified. How can private companies and industry stakeholders collaborate proactively to anticipate and combat the evolving threat of AI-assisted fraud? Thank you for the question, and I share your concern about fraud, and I think I've heard a lot of folks say we're in a moment where the defense has to keep up with the offense, right? We want to make sure that what our financial institutions are empowered to have the same tools to detect fraud that the fraudsters are using to advance it. That's the most important is that our institutions are, whether they're small banks, whether they're large ones, that they have access to that state-of-the-art screening technology. I think, you know, one thing that I talked about in my opening testimony was the importance of dialogue. And I think making sure that we have spaces, whether it is through sandboxes, or whether it's through other mechanisms that are set up by the Congress or by the regulatory agencies to constantly be sharing information about these uh, advances in technologies and about these fraud capabilities so that we are all collectively working together on solutions. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate those insights, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. 